Welcome to the Callaway Golf Podcast, part of the Callaway Podcast Network. Here's your host, Jeff Newbarth. Welcome to the Callaway Golf Podcast. Jeff Newbarth here, and I'm super excited to be joined by Eric Van Royen. But I don't even want to talk to you, Eric. I just want to hear you shred something. So take it away. Hit something. All right, it's Music Monday, and as we've been talking about this, I've been so excited for this podcast. Ever since I saw uh, you put out your ACDC video, um, you you just uh, for, forget golf. We'll talk a little bit of golf because I think we have to, uh, but I want to talk music with you. Yeah, sure. It's fine. It's, it's really funny when that ACDC video went out. I, I had no idea it would kind of blow up the way it did. It, it got more response than, than my tweet of when I won my first year pin tour, and so it's quite funny how that works out. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Like you're like, hold on, like I just like was the best golfer in, in the world on my tour for a week, and like more people are excited because I can play. You know, you shook me maybe, all night long. Maybe I'm in the wrong line of business. <laughs> yeah, or maybe you need to have a guitar with you as you finish these events, where you right. know, as people bring the champagne to dump on you, someone hands you a guitar and you just get plugged into the sound system like, on 18. Right, and you just rip a stick solo. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right. So let, let's go back into the the music and kind of where it started it is music monday um mm-hmm. and that's why we're doing this on a monday um when did you learn to play guitar and how much of a passion is this for you yeah i guess before i even started you know my my dad always used to listen to guys like neil young um rolling stones dive straights so that's the kind of music i grew up listening to as a kid um anything hip-hop he would just turn down the radio so um so you know then I always wanted to play guitar and I finally convinced my mom to get me some lessons I was 14 when I started and um it was slow because you know I got lessons for about a month and then from there on I had to kind of do my own thing so uh, it was slow at first but it's always been a passion of mine yeah and um you know, now we were talking before we started here that one of the hard parts about being a world, you know, golfer, because you do play, you play all over the world is not exactly having all the time to, uh, to really dive into guitar. That's kind of changed now. How much time a day are you spending on it? Yeah, more than I have in the last few years. That's for sure. Um, it's been great. You know, I'm now kind of finally getting into some solos, some of the bands that I really try to play. And, um, I guess it's a solo lining with, with everything in life. So it's, it's a nice time for me to just chill out and, and do, you know, another thing that I love to do. So it's good. All right. Well, again, we're here with Eric Van Royen live on Facebook uh, and also part of the Callaway Golf Podcast. If you're listening on demand, enough talk. Why don't you, uh, we, first of all, people, if you're, if you're watching live, ask us your questions and Eric's going to answer them, preferably about music. Uh, but we can answer some golf ones too, right? Sure. Uh, and if you have any requests, let's uh, let's see what we can do. We also have a poll, and we're going to put up the the poll uh, after this first song. And the thing will be, what will uh, who is Eric's favorite band? We'll answer that a little bit later on in the show. So don't give it away with uh, this song, or maybe confuse people. Why don't you uh, take it away and give us something? You want me, you want me to play something? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Um, so I just, um, I guess I just learned the the intro to Sweet Child of Mine. So. Uh, we'll give it a go. Hang on. Yeah. That was okay. How long, how long did that take to learn? I don't know, an hour or so, maybe a little more. Really? Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I've been playing for a while, so it comes a little quicker to some, but it's, it wasn't so you, perfect. I made a few mistakes, but yeah, it's fun. Do you listen, uh, do you learn music kind of by ear or do you get, you know, tab sheets and, and, and try to study it that way? Um, a bit of both. I've, I've got a decent ear, but something that's going to be quite technical, um, definitely tab sheets. And I mean, I can't read music. So um, tab sheets are extremely handy. Well, I would think that now you have the time to learn how to read music too. We can uh, add that to your uh, list uh, of things I've, I've, going I've on. I've got myself and stop procrastinating. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, so here we go. What is Eric's favorite band? The four nominees are the Black Keys, U2, the Foo Fighters, 
or the Rolling Stones. So we want you to vote there uh, and select a little bit later in the show. Uh, we'll ask Eric to play something from his favorite band. Uh, that is live right now, and we want to hear you guys uh, take on that. We also want to hear your questions uh, for Eric Van Roy. And let me get to one bit of golf news. So this morning, about an hour ago, uh, there was a joint statement put out there by the RNA, by the PGA of America, the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour. I'm probably missing someone. Augusta National, they're pretty important. Uh, we should actually all be there right now. Um, and they, they basically announced sort of some type of revised plan schedule at this point. What, what's your reaction to it, knowing that we have no idea what's going on? Um, yeah, as I'm, also, I'm, I mean, I'm really happy that they finally kind of came out with something because for me, it was difficult to continue to practice because I don't know when we're going to start up playing again. And it's hard just to kind of beat balls for no reason. So I'm happy that they came out with some sort of schedule. Um, it's interesting to see that, you know, we've got uh, the Masters and, and the US Open after the FedEx Cup playoffs. Um, so that's interesting to see. But um, it's nice to know that there's a bit of a shining light at the end of this tunnel, knowing that we're yeah. going back to golf. And you've been working on your game at the house. You have a little yeah. home setup. Yeah, I've got a net um, in the living room here. and um, In the living room? <laughs> I've got a really, really good wife. So um, I've moved some of the chairs around and I've put a big net up. Um, and I I don't have a, have a simulator because, you know, I just don't have room and yada, yada, yada. And got the track man and, and I've got it connected to the TV so I can actually still play um, golf courses. It'll just be on the TV screen instead of hitting into an actual projector in front of you. So... I've been doing work with my coach in the mornings through FaceTime and we're, we're trying to make it work. So, yeah, I mean, that's gotta be so difficult, right? Because obviously you guys, you know, all professional golfers are such creatures of habit and um, you know, you have your schedules, you know, where you're going to play, you know, you're off weeks, you're on weeks. And now it's just been in complete chaos. How have you adapted to sort of the, uh, the, the, the new normal? Yeah. Um, I think that's what makes good golfers as well as that adaptability, you know? So I don't know this i bought a net like last minute and a little hitting that it's something i would you know i kind of want to leave my golf at the golf course but we've had to change yeah. that now so it's really just been working on a few of the swing changes that we're starting to you know sort of get a hold of um and doing a little bit of skill practice with that so being able to shake the ball along with feeling that feeling we want to feel in the swing so um we've just had to change and we do maybe 20 minutes to an hour of that three times a week, something like that. So nothing too right. strenuous. Yes. No, it's enough to keep loose. All right, we got a couple of questions from the uh, internet. How much biltong have you eaten during the lockdown from Big Shim? <laughs> Whoever sent the message needs to send me some, please. <laughs> I know that I know that Ernie just, he just came out with his own brand, so maybe I have to give him a call. For those that don't know, biltong is our South African version of, of beef jerky, and it is way better. So please get your hands on some. Um, really? Well, I need to try this. It's delicious. Sweet. Jerky is, is too sweet for me, at least. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Ernie just made or just came out with his own brand of Biltong. So maybe I need to give him a call and see if I can get my hands on some. Yeah, really. Get an extra bag and send it this way. All right. The next question is from Matt Dawson 513. Where does the nickname Freddy come from? <laughs> so my full name is Frederick Wilhelm von der Rooyen, or well, now I can Frederick, guess it. Frederick, um, and my grandfather it was also he was Frederick Wil William, and so when my college teammates found out that my full name is actually Frederick, they started calling me Freddy, and it's just kind of stuck from there. So my caddy Alex, we were teammates at University of Minnesota together, and he calls me Freddy. Pretty much my college teammates, and now the rest of the world. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I've got to ask you about university of Minnesota. Uh, yeah. cause when, when I first, I forget who a couple of years ago, someone was telling me, he's like, you got to check out Eric Van Roy and he's, he's yeah. going to be this player who's going to be elevating in our, our team. And he went to play college golf, at the university of Minnesota. I went to Syracuse, um, cool. also known for its great weather. And we didn't even have a college golf team. Like I remember yeah. one year <laughs> we used to try to play golf. With my buddies and I, every April 8th, we, we made it our own holiday and we're coming up on April 8th day. Yeah. Um, and one year we played, it was like complete snowstorm. So what was it like trying to, to play golf at uh, Minnesota? Um, coming from South Africa, it was definitely an adjustment. Um, yeah. I've never heard of an indoor practice facility. So, um, but 
you know, it, w- it was great for me for multiple reasons because I, I got away from my parents, got out of the house. So I had to mature really quick, um, you know, learn to be okay being out of my comfort zone. And Minnesota definitely provided that. It was cold, um, weather was crappy a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but I guess being, you know, a Division One school, we did have the opportunity to travel south a lot as well. So um, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's funny. I took golf my senior year when I just needed like one credit of a class just to like completely <laughs> like blow off. And yeah. um, the 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 coach of it was actually a Syracuse assistant basketball coach, Mike Hopkins, who's now the head coach at Washington. Yeah. Um, you know the Huskies, and and I'm pretty positive that as a uh, college senior, I could have beaten Hop. But we basically would go into the basketball gym, kind of right around practice time for the for the hoops team, and they would put nets up or sorry, mats down and yeah. give us wiffle balls. And we would just try to make baskets from it. Uh, oh, and then okay. finally one time they let us go out on a golf course. It was like cold and snowy the whole time. It's such yeah. a, uh-huh. such a crazy way to work on your game. Maybe prepared you for now when you're inside. Uh, we got a question from our buddy, Nate Morris. How much room do you need to set up a net in your house? Like, like what, what's the height you have going on? Um, well, it, it depends how straight you hit it. <laughs> you know if you're, yeah you're, you're gonna be a lot straighter than me and Nate right, Morris I don't know right, your golf game right so I mean the roof of the house I think they're like three meters high so it's like nine feet or ten feet so this is definitely enough room and we've got an open plan house so um the kitchen and the living room are kind of one so I've literally moved a few of the chairs out of the way so I can do my thing that's why I said I've got a really good wife so she's letting me just absolutely yeah, absolutely. And, you, and, and so, so from Minnesota, you said earlier, you don't know any prints, but we're going to try to change that at some point. Cause yeah, yeah. I think that's got to be part of the state thing. Why don't you uh, hit us with something else you've been working on on the guitar? Uh, okay. Let's see. Um, uh, let's go. Obviously everybody saw, I played um, the ACDC song the other day. I'm trying, st- starting to learn a song called Money Talks also about ACD. So it's pretty simple. Nice. Yeah, I was yeah. just I was a couple notes away from singing. But it's a little early out here. So one thing we did talk, you, you're not going to be singing. So who's joining you in the PGA Tour, European Tour band these days? Do you have other guys out there that you kind of jam with? Well, I wish. I mean, I know uh, Ryan Fox is a drummer and he plays a little guitar as well. So um, we'll maybe get him on the drums. Dylan Fratelli plays a little bit of saxophone. Um, I don't know how much still, but I know he does. And I guess we'll be looking for a bassist and a lead vocalist, but um, Dave Phoenix from Lincoln Park, I've gotten to know him the last few years and he sent me a message on Twitter saying he'll he'll sub in for the bassist. So I think we'll be- Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that'd be like a, like kind of the pro-am day, right? right. When you get him exactly. kind of jumping in, but the reverse is he'll be the pro and you, you'll be the am in, the, in that scenario. <laughs> I'll let him take over, that's fine. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's give an update to our poll and we're gonna answer it in a little bit. Uh, who is Eric's favorite band? The Black Keys have uh, 0%. U2 has 20%, the Foo Fighters have 63%, and the Rolling Stones have 13%. I would have thought uh, a few more people would have picked the Black Keys given, you know, some of the, the, yeah, I mean, they're, they're like a, a really great rock band and it kind of fits kind of the genre of music that, that you, you've been kind of sharing with us. Absolutely, I love the Black Keys. I'm, I'm quite surprised people went that route, but I mean- Yeah, not- well, we're not gonna give it away quite yet, but we'll work on it. Uh, Dan Dutton wants to know where my guitar is. Sorry, Dan. There's there's zero chance. I, I did one uh, one Oasis singing uh, way too late in a pub in uh, St. Andrews, and I've retired from uh, from music. I just enjoy listening to it, and uh, I'm a huge music concert uh, goer. I try to go as often as I can when bands I like are in town. What are some concerts that you've attended that have kind of been memorable in your in your life? Um, well, I've been to a few in college. I went to see a band called Biffy Clyro. They came to. Minneapolis, now Biffy Clara is a, a Scottish band. If you don't know mm-hmm. who they are, check them out. Um, went to see them in Minneapolis. It was a small venue. It was awesome. 
Um, I've seen uh, the U2, they came to, to Minneapolis, played on at our TCF Bank Stadium, which was cool. Nice. Um, saw Foo Fighters twice. I've seen them in London with my wife at the Olympic Stadium, which was insane. 80,000 people just going nuts. Um, so yeah, I've had some, I've had some really good experiences. Dave, Dave Grohl is just one of those guys who everybody loves, everybody connects. Uh, yeah. Eight billion years ago in Miami, uh, in the nine, like my senior high school, they played uh, Lollapalooza down with uh, the Chili Peppers and then with the kind of the two headliners. Yeah, uh, it was crazy because it was like two days before we had a major hurricane kind of hit Miami. And I remember sitting there with my friends thinking like, huh, in a couple of days, things will look a little bit different. But right. music's one of those things that helps us get through sort of challenging times. Sure. Um, certainly, and we're in one of those right now with, with this pandemic that's going on. What, um, are, are there any sort of, have people like been reaching out to you? Like what's the coolest thing you've heard since you started posting some of these music videos to your, uh, to your social media accounts? Um, Besides being invited on this podcast. I mean, that's yeah, kinda, right. would say whatever the second best thing is. Well, just, I guess a massively positive response. Um, I was quite surprised the intention, you know, when I posted the first one, wasn't to get a response from anyone. It was just like, Hey, mm -hmm. here's one of my hobbies, but it's kind of blown up and that's why we started this music Monday thing. And, um, people have sent in requests. Um, I've gone from, I really hate all your outfits, but now that you play rock and roll, you're one of my favorite golfers. So it's funny, it's funny how people kind of flip the, flip the coin around. Um, so it's been, it's been really positive. Yeah. What? Okay. I guess I have to ask the obligatory jogger question. Have, have you ever done an interview without someone asking about them? Um, yeah, I've done a few, but the majority definitely the people kind of touch on the joggers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Why it's so polarizing. Like, I don't it's know. Not like you're, I, guess, I, mean, I guess golf is, is quite a traditionalist sort of sport. Um, and I understand that, but it's also changed so much the last few years that, I mean, I think they're cool. They're, they're sporty. It's a little different. So I think if you don't yeah. like them, you got to try them. And, and oh, by the way, you can actually go somewhere after you play a round of golf and everyone's exactly. not looking at you like, oh, that guy just walked off the uh, the 18th green. Exactly. Throw those baggy jeans in the, in the bin. That's what I say. Exactly. There was a little bit of that. All right. Got a question from our buddy Joe House. Uh, House is known as a foodie. What is your favorite restaurant in the United States throughout your travels playing the PGA Tour or college? What's your go-to or even at home in, uh, in Florida? Um, we've got... The favorite down here, which uh, my manager will test you, there's a place called um, uh, Rocco Tacos. Oh, and, I love Rocco Tacos. Yeah, it's awesome. And yeah. um, Mexican food isn't something we really eat in South Africa, so I never had it until I came to the U.S. So it's probably one of my favorite cuisines all around the world. All right. Well, next year during Tory, uh, whether it's during U.S. Open or during Tory Pines, right. you got to join us. There's there's a couple you know, places that have been here about a mile from where I live that have been here since the 60s. Yeah. Um, two in particular that are, are Tony Chacal and Fidel's that are just off the charts, traditional, you know, family uh, Mexican restaurants. Yeah. We, we got to take you out there. And they actually have the mariachi bands that go around so you could jump Wait. in and, and kind of enjoy it. Join us. Uh, all right. We have a question from Jen Turk. I've heard of this person. Uh, no, it's actually from Quinn Zercher. Two iron or five wood? Two iron. Two iron. Why? Um, I've, I don't know. I've, I've never had a five wood. Um, my dad played with a five wood for a long time, but, um, ever since I guess I've been sort of strong enough, I've always hit a two iron and I just like the look of an iron instead of another wood. I, I have, I have a strong three wood and the two iron kind of fits right in that gap. So it's, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the whole challenge, right, is, is right. for you guys, it's finding the gapping and then when you use it on the golf course, whether it's off the tee or, exactly. or second so, shot on a long par five. The two, the two iron comes in handy for me a lot off the tees. It's, it's one of my sort of fairway finders. Um, and there's not, a t you know, I can hit it high, I can hit it low. It's really versatile. So if I need to hit it into a par five, I can still do that. Nice. All right. Um, David Jimenez wants to know, uh, well, he has a suggestion. Uh, do you remember uh, Peter Jacobson when he had his group, uh, Jake Trout and the Flounders? Of course, the late Payne Stewart was part of that group. 
Um, um, I do not. I, I, I've, I've, I've sort of heard of it, but I haven't actually yeah. seen it. Yeah. So, so they used to do, um, you know, they used to play quite a bit, uh, especially, you know, as the tour kind of rolled around. But they also did some fun music videos uh, yeah. and stuff like that. So, so do he, I guess what, what David is suggesting that we should get a group uh, and whether it's over Zoom or whatever, try to get you guys to play kind of an anthem or a song or two, uh, maybe we raise some money for charity or something. That could be kind of cool with some That's music. That's a really good idea. Um, that's a really good idea. We need to reach out and see if there's anyone else, you know, that can play an, an instrument or something. I mean, yeah. between the PGA Tour and between uh, the Friends of Callaway, we have so many musician friends between Vince Gill, Adam Levine, uh, our buddies in the band Iration. We'll, we'll be able to help you put something together, but I think we should right. do something. Have you ever, have you ever yeah. written any music? Um, I have. Um... I'm not going to win a Grammy with it, <laughs> so, um, but, and I'm not, I'm not um, at that point where I'm comfortable with playing it for, you know, thousands of people, but I've written a few stuff. It's just, it's, it's fun for me to explore that kind of creative side of things. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, speaking of exploring the creative side of things, why don't you uh, hit us with another one and then we'll give the poll question uh, answer after this one. So Jim, why don't you update it for me and then uh, we'll go from there. Sure. So this isn't actually a song, um, but this is just some bluesy stuff. For Who are some of the blues influences on you? Um, BB King, Buddy Guy. Um, there's a few, but I'm only sort of now starting to touch on them a little bit more. Um, my father-in-law is a massive blues guy. He's got oh, nice. literally, you know, this record collection that will blow your mind. Um, and he was kind of the one that introduced me to some more bluesy stuff. So now that I've finally got, you know, how many months in my hand, I'm starting to learn a little bit more about the technique. Um, diving into some of the artists so it's actually been fun yeah and i'm i'm old so i listen to what what you would call classic rock i would just kind of call like the music i grew up with and right. so many of those bands whether it's the rolling stones mm -hmm. um you know they, they really come to mind because they have so many some of these bands had so many great you know blues influences sure. that sure. you can hear you know when you're listening to some of the the, the most famous guitar riffs of all time Absolutely. that there's blues influences that kind of uh I kind of went there. We, guitarist wise, well, I guess let's answer this poll question. Uh, Eric's favorite band, we have 22% of the Black Keys, 11% U2, 56% Foo Fighters, and 11% with Rolling Stones. The answer is? Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Yeah, well done. People got it. Can you play us a little something from uh, the Foo Fighters? Um, let's see, you're rattling my brain now. Uh, Everlong, My Hero, Learning to Fly. Oh, Everlong, okay, hang on, let me just. Uh... That's the, the yeah, when they play that live, it is just so crazy. You mentioned you've seen them. I've seen them a couple times as well. Mm -hmm. a really small show in New York City, uh, probably about four or five thousand people, and it was just it was just electric how they play. Yeah, it's awesome. I guess I guess both the smaller show and the bigger show have you know the things that can be awesome when it's that intimate and that small, and you feel like you're right there. But when it's that yeah. big, well, I mean, when we saw them in London they obviously ended with Everlong and there's fireworks going off and got goosebumps mm -hmm. goosebumps just talking about it. So yeah. It's All special. right. Well, we're going to, we're going to put another poll question up a second, but we have a couple other questions from our Facebook audience. Uh, John Bingham, do you prefer radio rock or do, digging deep to find your music? Both. Um, obviously as a kid, you, you sort of play what you hear on the radio and what's popular um but now you i've definitely sort of you know gone deeper into some of the stuff um as i've gotten older i definitely think that as a kid you just kind of do whatever you listen on the radio there wasn't yeah, for sure didn't listen to a lot of pop or hip-hop or stuff or rap but um now i finally have the opportunity to get a little deeper into some of these things 
Plus, I think one of the things too, you, you mentioned earlier that, you know, your dad was your influence and yeah. if you're in the car with dad, you're not picking what he's listening to. So you're going to you're gonna either like it or you're going to be, going to be angry all the time. Right? right. Exactly. So yeah, you said it straight on. Yeah. All right. Next question. Then be real careful with this answer. Uh, Cause I believe sure. your wife's asking the question, what is your favorite spot in the world? So either a, she would like to, you to plan a trip with her somewhere. Or B, there better be something memorable that you remember here. All the pressure is on you, Eric. What is my favorite spot as in throughout the world? Like I just wrote your favorite spot in the world. I'm assuming it's uh, it's um, your, your, your travel. My favorite spot in the world. My, my, we've been fortunate. My parents have a beach house in South Africa. And um, it's a town. I mean, if there's more than a hundred people living there permanently, it'll be a lot. And it's this small, quaint little place. I always love, I love being by the ocean. And um, whenever I'm there, it's, it's awesome. So it's, I it's, apologize. That was actually, I believe it was your mom, Elise Van Royen, who asked that question. That's not, my not mom. Not that's my mom. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you answered that right. Yeah, that's my mom. So it's a little town called Jongensfontein. And um, Rob, you're welcome back. Yeah, I'm, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, we have another poll we're going to go up here. We're going to go a few more minutes with Eric Van Royen here. We're talking mostly music here on Music Monday on the Callaway Golf Podcast. Favorite album? So you mentioned them before, Biffy Clyro, Opposites, Foo Fighters, There's Nothing Left to Lose, Black mm -hmm. Keys, Tighten Up, or Fleetwood Mac Rumors. So we'll take everyone's opinions Fleetwood on that Mac. one. Yeah, yeah, Fleetwood Mac Rumors, that's a great album. Really that's just good. A, a really great album. And uh, when I got... Um, my first record player that my mom actually bought me a Fleetwood Mac. Um, I think it was a greatest hits album. So yeah, brilliant band. Yeah, there was a, a probably got it was years and years ago uh, when I was working for USA Network. So it had to be before 2004. We did the Kapalua tournament every year. Yeah. And uh, I got lucky enough to go out there a couple of times and you, you'd kind of be out there for six or seven days, do some content, and then you'd, you'd put that in the, the the show on Sunday morning. And I got to play golf with uh, Tim Rosa Fort and Mick Fleetwood. And Mick Fleetwood, you know, is 6'4", is 6'5", six, six, just this huge hulk of a man. And he just started playing golf. And Rosie knew him pretty well. Yeah. And he made his first ever par that he had ever made uh, in that round. And this guy's dancing up and down. And we're like, what's better, you know, playing Tusk to a sold out, you know, stadium or this right. car and he's like the park it's not even close <laughs> so it's funny how everybody oh, wants to it's all relative right <laughs> yeah yeah exactly everyone wants to do kind of what they're not and, exactly and, right everyone wants right. to kind of experience uh sort of the other thing have yeah. you through, through the course of, of playing tour events and pro-ams and stuff have you been able to meet some some musicians and professional musicians and if you do do you let them know that you play a little bit or do you kind of yeah. like just so I, I mentioned that i know dave phoenix who basis of for lincoln park and yeah. i met him a few years ago at the Dunhill Links on the European tour. And uh, at first I kind of knew who he was. I didn't really know. And then, you know, introduced myself on the first tee and we're playing the practice round on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. And we started getting chatting and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I'm the basis for, for Lincoln Park. Um, <laughs> and that was awesome. Then, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, I play as well. So yeah. can we hook up and play together? You're like itching to ask all these little questions. Yeah. But I've got all of myself back. Um, but we, yeah, we, we, you know, stay in contact quite often. So maybe one day. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because you know one of the great things about golf is that it kind of connects all these these people together. Right. And there's so many musicians uh, who play who just absolutely, absolutely love this game. Um, and I think that's just one of the really neat things is the approachability, especially some of the celebrity events, whether it's the Dunhill Absolutely. or Pebble, Pebble over here, the Amex uh, that Phil runs over here. One yeah. thing you did earlier this year in Europe that I absolutely love is you and Matt Wallace uh, did a little drivers through the decade <laughs> video. Tell me about that. For, for those who didn't know, you can see it at CallawayGolf.com and the European tour produced it, but it was basically hitting uh, drivers starting with the Persimmons and going all the way to, to the Maverick driver of today. What was that like? That was pretty cool, and, and I enjoyed the take on it. It was something completely different. Um, it was during the, you know, one of the first weeks that the, the Maverick driver has been introduced, and so they got Matt and myself to to start with the, the Callaway Persimmon driver of, you know, yeah. I don't know, of the 80s or whatever, and then went, you know, through the, the big Bertha, um, and then finally got up to the Maverick. And, but then at the same time, we had to change into different outfits of that era, so that was the most fun part for me. 
Yeah, same. It was it was quite funny. Matt got Matt got snubbed on some of the outfits for sure. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm not worried about it. We had a, we had a good crack with it. But it was fun because they they put the, the 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 top tracer out there and you yeah. could see the ball go. And what was your biggest takeaway from from you know? Did you gain appreciation for some of the the the, the players who came before you for hitting these little? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean that that persimmon wood is you know, the head is about as big as my current forearm. So, yeah. um, or the face at least. And it's, you know, the first one I hit, I don't think it got more than two yards in the air. So it's a completely sort of different action or a completely different release. Look, give me, give me, you know, a bucket of balls and I'd figure it out. But I mean, those guys, it was definitely a completely different game that they play compared to what we play now. Yeah, and then you had a lot of ball to it. So that was my one question is what golf ball did they have you hit with each of those errors that we're hitting today's golf ball? The ball of today. It was the ball of today. Okay. Yeah. I would have been really interesting to hit it with a lot of ball just to get the actual yeah. spin on it to get it up. Yeah. Um but yeah, they had us hit the ball today and, and I mean but still with a hit that small and and um it's again it's the the guys definitely had to shape their shots a lot more. Um mm -hmm. You know, completely different game today. We just tee it up and, and bang it as far as we can. Yeah. How, How much, much of a tinkerer are you with with golf equipment? Are you someone who's in the van, kind of with the team, kind of working on things, or do you kind of get it set and be like, all right, I'll see y'all next year? I try. I try and get it set as, as early as possible. Um, I'm not tinkering a ton. The only thing I might change is is maybe a wedge or two, depending on whether we're playing. You know, at the open and it's it's a Carnoustie mm -hmm. and it's really firm or Somewhere it's wet, you know, soft. I change out the bounce, something like that. But otherwise, I'm pretty set in stone. And in terms of of some of the the worldwide courses, I'm always so impressed with players like yourself who play a, a true world schedule. Does does that make it more challenging, or do you you know compared to people who just literally play the PGA Tour and maybe go overseas once or twice a year, or is it just something that's just that's just part of the deal and you're and you're used to it by now? Um, I think I'm probably more used to it than someone that that just sticks to one place. Um, I think the, the skill is, is adaptability and the ability to go from, you know, Morocco to China to the UK where it's wet and rainy and cold the next week. Um, that ability to just adapt and switch on and still produce the best golf that week. Um, that's something you've got to learn. And that's just, you got to put yourself in that uncomfortable position in order to learn that. So, right, all right. We have another internet comment from your sister. She says hi. Oh boy! Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, everybody at home is watching. What what time is it? In, well, uh, in it the, is seven thirty, I think, or six thirty, something like that. Uh, PM. Oh, okay. So, okay. so it's happy hour. Yeah, exactly. They're, everybody's um, in complete lockdown in South Africa at the moment. You're not allowed to leave your house. Um, you know, and it's, it's enforced, so it's quite strict. So everybody's at home watching this. <laughs> yeah, well, good. We're glad. Do you want to play something for all your, uh, your family in South Africa? Maybe something family likes? So this is Biffy Clyro. I'm going to listen to them later. I've never, I've never listened to them before, but that's the great thing about music, right? You always discover new things. Right. It's a great band. They've got a wide variety of um, some softer music to some really loud stuff. So yeah, it's a really good band to check out. Awesome. Let's give an update on your favorite album. Uh, so far, one person, 33% Biffy Claro, uh, Foo Fighters tied with them, Fleetwood Mac rumors tied, and no one is picking the Black Keys. I, I, Black Keys, for whatever reason, I don't know why people, I don't think people give them as much credit as they deserve. They are such a great band. They're a really good band, especially the fact that they're showing up twice on these polls. I'm surprised that yeah. people aren't biting. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 weird because I, I I talk about it all the time on this podcast. The only thing that's keeping me sane right now is the Peloton. And I love yeah. when, a, when a Black Keys song comes on because, like, you know it's going to get you, like, moving. And you're like, right. all right, cool. Here's right. four minutes of rock to kind of uh, – 
to kind of get through it. Benetton's awesome, man. And, and um, a lot of guys are doing it to, to sort of stay busy and stay fit. So it's, it's good. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm, I'm just trying, literally, we're on day 17 here in California of sort of our quarantine. So I'm riding every day um, just because right. I have the time. And it's, uh, it's, it's some of the most enjoyable times of the day. We got a bunch of rain here, which is why um, everyone, hopefully it'll keep people in town right. or inside a little bit more. We got a couple more uh, minutes with Eric Van Royen. Um, what, what, what sort of, what, when you start a year, are you one of these goal setting people or are you one of the people who's just kind of like, uh, I'm going to set a schedule and kind of adjust uh, on the fly? Well, I guess the last few years, it's had to be a bit of both. I, I write down goals, um, things I want to achieve throughout the year. But with me having played really well, uh, the schedule's changed a lot. Um, you know, and we've had to make adjustments on the fly from, okay, I played really well this week in Europe, which means I'm into the next two, three weeks on the PGA Tour. So um, we've had to jump around quite a lot. But um, again, that's where that adaptability comes in. So, Is that a goal to play more on the PGA Tour? Absolutely. Um, it's where the best players in the world play. Uh, it's We have a house here now in the US. So... Um, yeah. I think at the end of the day, I want to just compete against the best in the world, no matter where it really is. And and so many great South Africans, you know, starting with Gary Player, uh, sure. obviously Ernie, Ernie probably, and then you know you have that group of uh, you know Brendan Grace and Charles and Louis that have done so well. Are those guys you you hang out with when 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 you travel and and kind of learn from them, or is it kind of yeah. like a? Yeah, for sure. It's obviously Louis, Charles. Um, Brandon, those guys have played PGA Tour for the last how many years? So mm -hmm. I've only I only got my European Tour card a few years ago. So it's right. nice. It's nice to be able to hang out with them now or play a practice round with them now. Um, I've played with Gracie a few times. I've played with Shaw a few times in tournaments, and those are the kind of guys, especially Shaw, Louis, Ernie, that, that I've always looked up to as a kid, and. Um, you kind of learn from them. You know, we're, they all live down here in, in Jupiter. Yeah. So whenever yeah. this thing clears up, hopefully we can play together. And I think it's important to surround yourself with people that, that have achieved things like that, like winning majors um, or people that are better than you, no matter what it is you do. Um, I think it's important to surround yourself with those kind of people because it'll just push you to be better as well. Who is the best wine seller? Those guys, my, my guess is Ernie. <laughs> I would think so too, right? Yeah, even though, sure. even though I could see Ernie's being depleted quite quickly at certain times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he stocks it up pretty quickly as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, one thing I haven't really gotten too much into. I have a bottle of, of Pinotage uh, that's in the in, in my little wine fridge yeah. that I'm going to be trying. I haven't gotten as into the South African wines as I. Everyone who who I meet enough. tells me they're they're insane, just absolutely it's ridiculous. Enough. Yeah, you're missing out. Um, do you have the chance, you know, go travel to Cape Town? I know it's far away, but get on a plane, go to Cape Town. So you can spend two weeks there and, um, yeah, awesome wine routes, awesome, yeah, I'm, great wine. I think that's going to be one of the things that changes after this is all done, right? I think so many times we, we take things for granted. Oh, I could do that later or I can, you know, uh, you know, get outside and even go, you know, hit balls or, or play golf or do whatever. But I really think um, – you know, that maybe, maybe this will change that kind of, uh, you know, kind of this forced quarantine to allow us to kind of do some of the things. What are things on your list that, that you want to do away from the golf course, whether it's in music or just travel places you want to kind of get to and see? Well, my wife and I kind of made, we made a goal at the beginning of the year to, you know, with, with golf and it gets so busy throughout the year. And before you know it, it's end of the season and, um, you haven't really done anything together. So it's, 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 we made a little goal to, to take, even if it's just a weekend to go somewhere where it's just the two of us. Um, I've, I've always wanted to go to a place like Scotland and go on a hike for, for two days um, and just completely get rid of technology, get, you know, no contact with anyone. It's just the two of us. So that's definitely on my bucket list. You know, maybe we can do it here in the U.S. Even somewhere like Oregon or Washington. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. Right now, it's obviously not the best of times, which is ironic because we've got so much time on our hands. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, it's but, good time to plan. Exactly. Exactly. Good time to plan. All right. You got uh, J.P. Vanderwalt. I'm assuming these are all friends of yours. Uh, wish we were watching with Augusta National this week. We all what agree with that. Sorry, what's that? 
wish we were watching you at Augusta National this week. Yeah, hang on, I'm just going to decline that call. Um, I know, me too. I know JP used to play Sunshine Tour with me back in South Africa when we started out as professionals, and um, he lives in Georgia these days. And I know, I wish that too. I was really excited for my for my first Augusta. My parents were going to come over, but well, let's just have to wait a little bit longer. It seems. Yeah. Well, at least they announced a a November date. That's so it. we can we can kind of put that fall in Georgia could be pretty. All right, let's give the answer to what is your favorite album. The voting results have Fleetwood Mac and the Black Keys at 17% and a tie at the top between the Foo Fighters, There's Nothing Left to Lose, or Biffy Clyro Opposites. And the winner is? Biffy Clyro Opposites. All right, so congratulations to those of you who got that. Can you, uh, uh, can you hit us with one more song and then we'll kind of wrap this uh, podcast up? Let's see. You're putting me on the spot. That's um, my goal. So That's awesome. Here's a little creed for you. I know. Can you take me higher? Yeah. I recognize it. There hasn't been, other than the Bishy Clyro song, everything you've played, I've been able to recognize uh, right away. It just shows how good you are at this. Well, you're a muse, though. Well done. <laughs> I am. I am. Well, well, I can't thank you enough, uh, Eric, for spending some time with us on the Callaway Golf Podcast on Music Money. We'll have to do this again. Um, the next time we are doing a content shoot sure. and you're going to be there, please bring the travel guitar. Absolutely. And we'll Absolutely. have you hit some golf shots, but it'd be much more fun to do something with guitar. And then we need to search kind of the world of Callaway and try to figure out who we can kind of uh, pair you up with to, to do some music stuff. Because hey, this will be awesome. Absolutely. Give me a call anytime. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening or watching the uh, Callaway Golf Podcast. We've been live on Facebook tomorrow, which will be Tuesday, April 7th. We are going to have uh, Patrick Rogers in the PGA Tour and his coach, uh, Jeff Smith, Radar Golf. So I'm going to ask them, maybe they can play some instruments. We'll see. Uh, then later this week on Wednesday, we have a podcast I recorded a couple weeks ago with Tom Watson, the legend, uh, talking a lot about Augusta National. So uh, if you're kind of missing the Masters, and we all are, Tom Watson will give you a little bit of a taste of that. And then on Thursday, check this one out, Eric. We have a really fun foursome uh, that's going to be doing one of these Zoom FaceTimes. I believe at 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 o'clock on the East Coast, we have Masters champion Danny Willett. We have Henrik Stenson, the birthday boy. He turned uh, 45 okay. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we will have Jim Furyk and uh, former Ryder Cup captain. We will have Mark Leishman, who, if you follow Mark on social, he's been uh, mowing the lawn quite a bit back home in Virginia. <laughs> that's kind of his stress relief. You have guitar, he gets on track. Uh, that's awesome. That sounds like a fun one. Yeah, so we're going to uh, do that on uh, Thursday. So thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Callaway Golf Podcast.